Now guys, I was reading this article we are going to look at in a moment and it got me extremely suspicious the more I read on. First you have to ask yourself, what are the chances this could happen to a journalist? I'd say very remote, but technically possible I guess. Then you have to ask yourself, what are the chances this could happen to a journalist who also set up a refugee charity and not be raising more than a few eyebrows? It certainly raised mine. Now, you might be wondering what the hell I am talking about. Well, I am talking about this Telegraph article banging on about how one of its migrant-loving journalists just happened to have a Sudanese illegal immigrant in his top box after returning from holiday in France. So he comes back from holiday, and before even unpacking, he has himself a little learner with this story, is what I take from it. The convenience of it all stinks if you ask me. Now, there are a few things that make me question the story given by this guy, which we will get into as we go through it. It headlines, I was driving home from France when I discovered a Sudanese refugee hiding on top of my car. Which obviously, we all know it's not a refugee. You picked him up in France, he ceased to be a refugee when he crossed multiple European countries to get to France so he could jump in your box and come here. Telegraph photojournalist Will Wintercross has seen wars in the Middle East, but was still shocked to find a man in his roof box. Now, the first paragraph of it's going on about his journey through France and his holiday, we really don't care about that. We presume the man climbed in at the site Europe, a shopping mall close to Calais, where we always go to stock up on wine when we are driving home through the Channel Tunnel. The roof box on our Mercedes estate was a few years old and not in the best nick. I had broken the lock a while ago and it could be prized open with a screwdriver. That to me sounds very suspicious in the sense that you would drive over to France going through the Channel Tunnel knowing what goes on over there with a faulty lock that you know could be exploited by these people. It's even more suspicious when you factor in the charity he has set up which we will get into in a moment. When we came back with our wine and loaded up the boot nothing seemed out of place. It was only driving on the M25 when another car pulled up next to us and gestured that the lid had flapped open on the roof box that we realised something was amiss. Which is what really got me suspicious because if you stopped on the M25 how didn't you catch this guy in there then? How did you manage to do it when you got home? We pulled over in the rain and I quickly lashed it shut with a tow rope we keep in the back of the car. Then we headed home to the quiet residential street in Berkshire town of Hungerford where we live. So the roof box was wide open, you pulled over, got out of the car, closed it and lashed it down yet didn't happen to see a fully grown man lying inside it on top of your stuff. Which I do have to say, when you look at the picture, looks like it was only half packed, so your claim that you packed it tight is a load of bollocks given what we can see by the photographic evidence. As we unloaded the car, we started to hear a knocking from the roof box. I thought it might be my neighbour playing a prank, but then Lucy said, someone is in there. Okay, and I have to call bullshit on that. How would your neighbour be playing a prank if you've just arrived, you complete and utter arsehole, and you lashed it shut? What did they do? Jump inside and lash it shut themselves? Please tell me how they would actually manage that feat. I am waiting. Just in those last couple of paragraphs we've read through there, I am calling a complete load of bullshit. None of it actually makes any sense and is extremely suspicious, if you ask me. You'll have to let me know what you guys think in the comments. Obviously, this week, a lot of the focus has been on refugees and migrants crossing the English Channel. On Wednesday, a record 409 people were recorded making the dangerous journey in dinghies, prompting the Prime Minister to warn the UK is a target and magnet for people traffickers. No, it's a target and a magnet for illegal immigrants because tosspots like you always seem to be bigging them up and making out like they are refugees when we all know that they're not. And obviously, the government needs to pull its finger out of its arse, grow a fucking spine, and do something about it. They've only got a couple of months left of being able to blame the EU, so I suppose in January we will really see what is going to happen. But as the authorities begin to focus their attention on the channel, it seems a new route is opening up, and migrants and refugees stowing away in holidaymakers' roof boxes is becoming more common. This is nothing new, this has been happening for a while, and I would expect most cases are legitimate where the person has climbed in there, but I certainly question this one, that is for sure, given the things that he has said, what he has done in the past, and of course, the look of his box, which as I said, is only half full, despite him saying it is ram packed. Earlier this summer, a British family found two teenage stowaways in their roof box after pulling into a petrol station near Normandy. 
Last September, a couple from Newbury in Berkshire, not far from us, arrived home from France to find a 17-year-old hiding in their roof box. They spoke at the time of their shock at the discovery, and for us, it was exactly the same. Which once again has me questioning how you can say you didn't see this person in your roof box when you closed it on the M25. It all seems very suspicious to me, I don't know about you guys. He said he immediately called 999, and my main concern was whoever was in there might die. The call handler said keep in contact with the person until the officers arrived. He couldn't speak any English but every now and again we would exchange a few words plus keep knocking to each other so we knew he was okay. Well, he had been in there since France and he had done alright since then, so my guess is he would have been perfectly fine. You're not flying at 30,000 feet, you're driving down the street. Two Thames Valley police officers arrived after about 30 minutes and we opened up the box. This young man, in his early 20s, with very dark skin, trendy jeans and a black hoodie climbed out. Which here you can see on the screen now is a picture of them actually arresting him and the box that he claimed was absolutely rammed packed. Let me tell you now, the picture you can see on the screen there does not look rampack to me, that is for sure. The guy said he was from Sudan and then the police led him away. They wouldn't tell me what would happen to him, but I will try and find out. I will tell you now what will happen to him. He will be taken to a 5 star Hilton hotel, given himself 40 odd pound a week, probably given a new mobile phone, get some broadband, might piss and complain about it, and you never know, might turn out to be a bit stab happy. Or, he could like the broadband, get on fine, and then eventually he will be given everything that he doesn't fucking deserve. It continues, I have worked for the Telegraph as a photo and video journalist in Syria, Iraq, Libya, and covered the mass exodus of refugees across the Balkans in 2015. I have actually been to detention centres in Libya where African migrants and refugees are often held after crossing the Sahara Desert en route to Europe and seen for myself the appalling conditions they are subjected to. Following my work in Syria, I also set up a charity, the Syrian Refugee Relief Fund, which looks after orphans and children with prosthetic limbs in Syria and Turkey. I have had a lot more exposure to this kind of thing than most people, but regardless of what I have done in a professional capacity, experiencing it was a real shock. And I have to say, I am really shocked at how convenient this whole story is, never mind any of the bullshit he has come up with. What are the actual chances of this happening to him, especially someone who has started a charity for refugees? It just seems far too suspicious, and this copper's look at the camera person there suggests he is a little bit suspicious as well, maybe. I actually thought this was a nothing story until I realised it was actually a journalist that this had happened to, and that got my senses tingling, because I have to to wonder what the chances are which is what I keep saying I just can't figure out how rare this must have been for it to actually have been a telegraph journalist coming back from his holiday and actually finding someone in his roof box when all this shit is going on relating to the boats floating over here in record numbers I mean, he could be telling the truth, but I'm sorry to say, I really ain't fucking buying it. The M25 part of his story is just too suspicious, and also the claims that it was full when it clearly wasn't, and of course saying that he thought his neighbour was messing around is just a complete and utter load of bollocks, and the usual sort of shit you would hear when someone is making up a lie and going to a great extent to make it seem believable, which in turn, they actually make it more ridiculous. We're off! <laughs>